Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare Glenary Royal Edition. What's it like and how does it compare to the standard Blue Label? Stay tuned for the Whiskey Whistle. What up my whiskey people, Mark here from Whiskey Whistle on YouTube sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, Winterpeg, the center of North America, bringing you a two up of Johnny Walker Blue Label. We have Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare Glenary Royal Edition versus the standard Johnny Walker Blue Label. About $610 where I am out the door versus about $300, so a factor of two essentially. So first of all, we're going to check out the color of these two whiskeys. Let's put those side by side. So first of all, the standard Johnny Walker Blue Label has quite an orange glow to it. So very bright orangey hue, which we associate generally with uh, E150A caramel color has been added. And then when we look at the Glenary Royal Edition, we see something much different in color. And I think that is natural in color. That's my gut. The batch is small enough that I'm guessing that's the case. So what's the big difference between these two? With the standard blue label, we have your typical malts that are available now from Diageo mixed with their standard grain, which is Cameron Bridge, versus something different with the Ghost and Rare Glenary Royal. We have distilleries that are no longer in existence in this blend which makes a big difference. There's also a big difference in ABV, 40% for Blue Label versus 43.8% for the Glenary Royal Edition. Now let's check the legs out of both of these simultaneously. Well, let's see. They're both pretty slow to start, but the standard Blue Label trickles down first versus something very slow and oilier, I think, with the Glenary Royal Edition. Isn't that impressive? But what a difference in color. And I wouldn't have thought that. But sure enough, there is a difference there. All right, so let's check out, first of all, Johnny Walker's standard blue label. We'll check out the nose, the palette, and the finish. Then we'll add water and get into the Glenary Royal Edition. Stay tuned and leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Show me that you love the channel and hit that bell. Ding, ding. That way you're notified of future whiskey whistles, okay? All right, so the nose for the standard Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now, right off the bat, the first thing that I think is, wow, this is a very space-side oriented Blue Label. And I wouldn't have thought so in the past. So that seems to be a bit of a shift. And not only for Blue Label, but for the entire Johnny Walker collection. Very space-side-y. A little hint of peat working way in the background. For sure some Highland malts. Now, I don't especially smell the Cameron Bridge in here. So whatever, that Cameron Bridge must be well aged and well integrated here to make it this very malty, malt forward, interesting blended Scotch whiskey. And the nose tells me that it's stronger than 40%. Let's check out the taste. Cheers. It's waxier, a little bit peatier on the palate. Very nice, medium length finish, nice and sweet. A little bit of dryness, a little bit of fruitiness. I know for certain there's some nice Klein Lish in there. And that's giving it that waxy, delicious mouth coatingness to it. There's enough boldness to this that even at 40%, it's satisfying as a whiskey, for sure. 
years ago it was 43 percent especially for usa i think now it's just, just a blanket 40 but the 43 percenters of course a little bit better for flavor mouthfeel etc the more i taste it i do notice that single grain working in there but don't forget single grain scotch whiskey can be outstanding especially with enough time nice fruity finish the flavors you've got something like some lighter dried fruits like mango like um, pineapple rind pineapple rings we have a little bit of um, sponge toffee sponge sugar and some nice orchard fruits a little bit of vanilla a dollop of cinnamon and other baking spices in there as well okay we'll add some water let's make that three drops one two three that might have been four but that's okay we're still talking about a third of an ounce pardon me a third of a milliliter an ounce okay let that sit now let's get into the Glenary Royal Edition. Smelling this immediately, I know it's old school. We've got old malts in here. Some things about this Glenary Royal Edition, we have a bunch of dead distilleries in here. We have, of course, Glenary Royal, the namesake. This opened in 1825 and it closed, it stopped distilling in 1985. So that component in here is at least 35 years old. The distillery was demolished with properties, uh, apartments being built on it, I think in 19, starting 1993, gone off the face of the earth. We also have Pity Vache, which opened in 1974 and closed i think 2002 so at least 18 years old for that pity vache component we also have the canvas single grain scotch whiskey in here this opened in the 1830s and i think it closed also sometime in the 90s 1993 i think if memory serves all right and we also have glen elgin we have what else in there? It's listed on here. Let me just read that. Glen Elgin, Glen Lossie, Inch Gower, and also Glen Kinchy are the signature malts in here. There will be others in the background working in there. So more peat, but also more old school sherry. I can smell the Paxaret. I can smell possibly, I'm not sure, I think it's the Paxaret casks that I'm smelling here. Which is something, you know, for me, those old casks provide more, I don't know, more complexity because the wood is older and then it's got this, uh, this sherry seasoning that goes in and then I think did some of them did they pressurize the uh, the cask so that the the uh, pack surette would seep into the wood something like that and then even before that if we're talking about 1985 for the uh, the um, Glenary Glenary Royal there could very well be some um, sherry transport casks used in whatever they put in there and even if those were um, reused even if those were second fill third fill there's something about those casks that you cannot replace in today's whiskey you just don't find it at all so we've got old library volumes we have old cracked baseball glove leather We have liniment, we have fruity olive oil, the unfiltered kind that you have to shake before you pour it on your salad. 
take a spoonful of that. It is super flavorful. It's a little bit spicy, fruity, interesting. But overall, the net effect here is that we've got something that's kind of in the Western Highlands region. So space side for the newer one, closer to the coast in the Highlands for the old Johnny Walker Blue Label and especially this Glenary Royal Ghost and Rare edition. The palette. So it's 44% going on 48. Big and bold. All those flavors working in there. Spicy. We've got tons of nutmeg, ginger, sweet ginger though. We have cardamom, a tiny bit of cinnamon, not much cinnamon here. I think we've got a lot of European oak involved in this whiskey. The flavor goes right to the back of your throat. Spicy complex, undescribable, waxy, fruity. We've got papaya working in there. We have, um, again, the leather, lots of leather coming through. And a certain effect of rancio, what happens when spirits are left in cask for ages and ages. And again, it's something that not only affects me outwardly, I look like I'm enjoying this whiskey because I am, it's fantastic, but I'm also enjoying it internally. The way it fills my mouth, the way it hits the back of my throat, the way I feel something so different breathing in. And it's uh, it's warming, it's amazing, it's unique, it's special, it's historic. Supremely enjoying that the finish is insanely long, as you would expect, as you have to expect. You don't pay that much money and get a little waft of something that disappears, do you? Hmm. Again, that very fruity olive oil. I'm just going to add a tiny bit here. Two drops. One, two. Maybe we'll make it three. There. A little swish. All right, so now we've added water to both of these. Let's get back into the standard Johnny Walker Blue Label. With water added, you move away from Speyside into the Highlands. Definitely more Kleinlish working in here. I'm getting Oban, absolutely Oban coming through. Possibly even a, t a little bit of Talisker peeking its way through. For sure, we've got Kulila, the, the peaty esque coming from Kulila. A hint of Lagavulin, I wonder, I wonder. What a change, space side, and then all the way over to the coast. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, the palette with water, cheers. Much peatier on the palette, for sure. Talisker pepperiness, peaty pepperiness coming through on the palette. Is there a little bit of sherried Lagavulin in there? I wonder.
and I actually think we have some unpeated Kulila involved in this blend, which is coastal without that heavy peat. One final taste. Something coconutty, a little bit more of single grain forward from the Cameron Bridge, which is 90% corn, 10% malted barley. Giving it some, some sweetness, but also seems to provide a, a tiny little bit of a waxy, um, grainy, obviously, different edge to it than just your malts talking of course so anyway very interesting blend and I think that probably newbies would not recognize this as a blended scotch whiskey they would pick it out as a, um, a single malt or a single grain uh, pardon me single malt or blended malt I think they would like it a lot actually uh, price wise $300 it's a bit expensive for me here and I think that you're better off getting black label um, getting the, the green label for sure, getting the gold label reserve, yes, and the 18-year-old, absolutely. The 18-year-old is half the price of this nearly. Now, if you're in USA, the prices are much better, $200 and lower. And if you happen to have a Costco nearby and they sell liquor, I've seen it as low as $140 US, and that is absolutely worth it for sure. Get at least one bottle for you and your whiskey buddies to try. All right. Okay, so on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Johnny Walker Blue Label, the standard edition. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 85 out of 100. You heard it. 85 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Johnny Walker Blue Label. All right. Now what you're waiting for, let's get back into the Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare, Glenary Royal, and Seven Rare Whiskies Edition. <laughs> Special blend, they call it. And again, for this one, I think most people, most whiskey lovers, would not recognize this as a blend. And only a few would recognize, tasting this blind, that it is a blended Scotch whiskey. And for the standard blue label, if we're talking 60% grain, 40% malt, or 50-50, I think we're more like 60% malt here and 40% grain somewhere in that range. Again, super old school. Lots of Highland whiskeys. Obviously, there's a little bit of space side as well. We have Glenelgan. We've got Pity Vach, which is also Speyside. And Glen Kinchy, right? So that's a lowland component here. But I just, it's just amazing that this is just so old and reminds me of old whiskeys that I enjoyed when I was in my 20s. And for sure, we've got lots of old casks here. And I would be surprised if the Glenary Royal component were less than 10%. For sure, beyond 5, you need at least 5% to really shift the overall flavor by one particular whiskey. Big leather. It's just beautiful. And again, it's really hard to pinpoint what I'm smelling here. I'm smelling super old whiskey. Leather. Old books. The fruity olive oil I was talking about. Mmm. Some hobnob biscuits. Cookies. 
a little bit of digestive biscuits. Well, really interesting. That's just really, really lovely. Okay, the palette with water. Cheers, folks. Hmm. Everything that is good and right about Scotch whiskey is blended in this very interesting Johnny Walker Blue Label, Ghost and Rare, Glenary Royal, and seven other whiskeys special blend. <laughs> is that the longest ever title in the world of whiskey? It might be. Light fruits, orchard fruits, dark fruits, leather, old books, olive oil, wafts of peat. The finish is insanely long. In fact, it might even be longer with water than without. A tiny bit of astringency and still very, very, very chest warming. Still very uh, back throat tickling. Hmm. Is there anything holding this whiskey back? Possibly the ABV. If they were willing to go to 43.8, why not just make it 46? I think that would have really blown the whiskey world apart with this amazing blend. Hmm. That said, keep in mind, when you have supremely old malts, sometimes they are below 40% ABV, which may be very well why it was blended and not put out as a single release. Hmm. Okay, time to get onto the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score. Hmm. Lovely. For the Glenary Royal edition of Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare, what is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 94 out of 100. You heard it. 94 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare Glenary Royal Edition. Deserves a whiskey hug. Hmm. And a whiskey whistle kiss. Oh, beautiful stuff. And I have a friend that I want to share a little bit of this with. His name is Tyler, and he's awesome, and he will get a sample of that. And the other sample, I think I've got two ounces there, is going to go into the Whiskey Whistle archives. Well, thanks for watching. Should we do one more thing? Would it be a shame to blend both of those? It kind of would be, but let's add a little bit of this. to the Johnny Walker Blue Label Standard Edition. And I guarantee that's going to make all the difference. Much more complex on the nose. It blends right in because it's the right mix for Johnny Walker Blue Label. And I feel like it completes the blend. I think that the standard blue label is very good, but slightly unbalanced because of the perceived value by Diageo of their old stocks versus the, what can I say, the marketability and the saleability and the, uh, the volume they need for blue label and the fact that they have to put out this whiskey in travel retail at a lower price they have to put it in Costco at a lower price. Probably Blue Label would be best at $400. Um, absolutely. But that would affect the sales, wouldn't it? Hmm. 
that is the blue label you're looking for. Oh, final taste of the Glenary Royal Edition. It smells and tastes utterly delicious. Mmm. Magical. Oh, so beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Make sure you subscribe to the channel right over here. Hit the bell, ding ding, so you're notified of future Whiskey Whistles. And jump in and support me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whiskey Whistle and join the Whiskey Whistle crew. So, what can I say? Johnny Walker can be the best, but it takes about 600 bucks. And is it worth it? Personally, I feel yes, especially if you share that with friends. It's absolutely worth it. This bottle was actually made possible by a whiskey tasting that I did for Canada Life, which you can see the little tasting mat over there. So uh, that was just amazing. And everybody was pretty much unanimous in picking the Glenary Royal Ghost and Rare Edition of Blue Label as the winner for the night. What about the standard Blue Label from Johnny Walker? Is it worth it? Yes, especially if you can get it on sale. Okay, folks, take care now. We'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.